Okay, this is the payload for today's test. I've gone all the way to five kilos. Um, not really sure how well it's going to go. If it flies for just a few minutes, I'll be, I'll be happy enough with that. But um, who the hell knows if we don't try, eh? So, yeah, so this is actually 4,900 grams, and we're going to have 100 grams in the nose with those two 18650s as before. And if I just put this on here, we'll see, just to prove it. That's 49. 06 and the reason that I went with wood pellets for this by the way is um, quite a few reasons they're easy to measure out in small quantities like you just take one or two pellets out to change it by a gram um, nice to position and shape like this you can get it to just how you want because they kind of squash around uh, so that makes it easy when you're sliding it into the payload bay you just sort of squash it a bit like that and as long as the total height of your cocaine I mean wood pellets doesn't go above 14 centimeters as it sits here it gives you one centimeter space to squash it upwards as it slides in so that works out quite well um, also I figured it would be less damaging than having something like a brick or a you know, block of steel or lead or whatever because as it slams forward it's a little bit softer into whatever it's going to be slamming into so hopefully less damaging is what I was thinking um, and it's also kind of clean so if the plane crashed and the, these were flying uh, lying all over the ground I wouldn't feel obliged to clean them up because it's just wood um, and also cleaner in that let's say if this got all over the flight control or electronics or whatever it wouldn't be as bad as using sand or dirt or uh, sugar was another thing I considered but uh, these wouldn't mess up the electronics at all so overall it's quite a good um, material I think 11.93 yeah that's right ah uh, another beautiful day Sorry, we've got some noisy Australians over there on top of that tree. They're going to be squawking all throughout this video probably, but I was just about to express my amazement that that digger is still there. Like every day for three weeks he's been there. And then when I look down there, there's actually two of them. So, man, they've got a lot of work to do by the looks of it. Today's test I'm going to start from like as far back as I can. And I was looking at the footage of the last one with the 3.6 kilo payload. It actually seemed to start lifting off about here anyway which wasn't that much different from my previous flights. Um, of course, I might have been trying to <laughs> pull it back a little bit quicker, um, being concerned about it. But yeah, we still have this much plus another couple of meters that way. Because my biggest concern here with this extra weight is not actually the wing. Um, it's kind of funny, like in the early stages of this build, I spent a lot of time stressing about how this wing was going to hold up. And then I kind of completely forgot about that in the flying that I've been doing the last few times and looking at the footage of that I didn't really notice any wing flex so I'm not too worried about that my biggest concern is going to be that this this power system that I have here these 4S motors um, probably not really up to the task uh, because with 3.6 kilos it was already flying at 60% throttle so I'm, I'm guessing it's going to have to be 70 or maybe even slightly more for this one, but anyway, let's see what happens. Alrighty, here we go. Oh, oh, oh did you see that? Just enough. Just enough runway not to go tipping over the edge. Oh, actually, we're flying at... Feels like throttle's not much different to before, actually. Doesn't feel like it's a whole lot different. Yeah, what is that, 60-something? 60 61, 62 is my guess, just from looking at the throttle stick. Wow, it's fine. What was I worried about? Now I'm starting to think maybe more than 5 kilos would be possible, but... <laughs> not sure if I want to do that. At least not here anyway. From what we saw just then, this length of runway is the absolute minimum that it needs to get up with 5 kilos payload on board. That's flying fine. Okay, well I don't want to fly it too long and I probably can't anyway. So with the 3.6 kilos payload we got uh, 19 minutes, a little over 19 minutes at what feels like the same throttle as I've got here. So I'm expecting we'll make, we actually might be able to get more than 15 minutes. That'd be nice. Yeah, 63% throttle that is. 
is still turning to the right, isn't it? See how it's yawing slowly to the right? Couldn't really figure out what that is, but other than that, it's very stable. I mean, it should be. Oh, look at the altitude. It's just holding altitude there. It's 63% throttle. Wow. Just try a little return to launch here. That's done all right. Yeah, so 30 to 35 looks like the throttle needs to be. Amps, that is. 65%. Still not, that's not much of a difference from before. That's the most surprising thing about this. I wonder if there's uh, like some thermal activity or, or something, because it seems quite strange to me that, see how it's holding altitude here pretty much? It's at 61% throttle, which is the same as what it was in the last flight. And it's carrying 1.4 kilos more payload. Oh, it's coming down slowly, I guess. 113, 112. But yeah, basically the throttle and the, the amperage is not much different. That's quite strange. I guess percentage-wise, adding 1.4 kilos to a plane that's already 10.5 kilos is not as much of a change percentage-wise. Uh, as it was going from like 6.9 to 10 or whatever we did before that. Just trying to trim out that steady yaw that it's doing. I wonder if the motors are not giving equal thrust. That might be part of what causes that. Seems to be going fairly straight now. You see the two diggers down there? Okay, we've just gone over 15 minutes on the timer and there's 14.2 volts showing on the OSD at 64% throttle load. So I think it's probably time to land it, or 14.1 volts. Now you definitely be landing here. And we want to go into manual mode, half flaps, oops. Oh, I lost orientation, hold on. We're going away. That's not good. Okay, this way. All right. Sorry, I'm gonna have to return to launch there. I completely lost my orientation again. How did that happen? It's just a little bit too far away, I think. All right, let's see if I can land it <laughs> from here. So manual mode. Oh, it's too high. Full flaps. It's probably way too high, but let's see what happens, huh? Having to drop a lot of height here. Porpoising again. Whoa, holy moly. Just can't get that pitch under control, eh? Whoa, holy moly. Just can't get that pitch under control, eh? Are we all good? I think we're all good. This, um, this is how much I had to trim the rudder to, um, to, to get it to go straight. And I also trimmed the roll a little bit too. You can see, you can see that, uh, that's not, yeah, this is manual mode, right? Yeah. So that's how much I had to trim it. Not really sure why it keeps wanting to turn to the right. It didn't do that in the first few flights. It's just with the, the last two flights. So I'm wondering if maybe maybe this motor is pulling a bit more than the other one. It's not like they're stressed or anything, by the way. They're just a nice, nice cold ambient temperature. But everything, everything's good. Yes.